Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 6. Paul said, we all have different gifts, each of which came because of the grace of the grace because of the grace God gave us the person who has the gift of prophecy should use that gift in agreement with faith we should prophesy should use that gift in, in I'm sorry the person who has the gift of prophecy should use that gift in agreement with the faith or proportion to their faith anyone who has the gift of serving should serve anyone who has the gift of teaching should teach Whoever has the gift of encouraging others should encourage. Whoever has the gift of giving to others should give freely or generously. Anyone who has the gift of being a leader should lead diligently, enthusiastically. Today I want to talk about a gifted leader. A gifted leader. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we thank you today for 21 years of opening our doors to the community of Stockton and the surrounding communities, Lord, I pray that we would be able to lead properly, but more importantly, Lord, we would recognize what you're doing and in the fashion that you're doing it. For these last days that you have given us on the earth, we pray that we would be squeezed to the maximum, that we would be able to be pressed in such a way that when we are pressed, that you would begin to come out of us into the community, into everyone that we come in contact with. Lord, help my wife and I to lead this charge properly. And Lord, help us to be the instruments or the tools that you're going to use to help others to be all they can be for the kingdom of God. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Can you say in Jesus' name? Again, one more time, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing so long. I want to talk to you very briefly about a gifted leader. And the reason I'm talking about this is because not everybody believes in leadership, but leadership is essential. Here's what Merriam-Webster says about leadership or the definition of leadership. It is the power or ability to lead other people. Dr. John Maxwell said many times, and I repeat it as as much as I can when I'm talking to leaders, if, if you think that you're a leader and you're out there leading but you look behind you take a look behind you and you notice that there's nobody following you you're just taking a walk (laughs) you're not a leader you may be something else but you're not a leader because people should be following if you're leading dr john maxwell often says leadership is influence and i agree with him the bottom line is that everyone has the potential to lead But everyone has to be led even though they have influence. Everyone has the potential to lead and every person does have some level of influence. Look at the person next to you and say, I've got some influence. Amen. And tell the other person, I hope I'm a better influence to you. All right. That's good. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 in the first part, and verse 14 and 16, expanded Bible, he said, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Verse 14 goes on to say, you are the light of the world. And he goes on in verse 16, so let your deeds or your light shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Our job as leaders corporately is to lead people and make them thirsty for the things of God. Our job is that we're so illuminative that when we walk into a room that other people will see our good works or what we're doing for God and they will begin to give Him the glory and we will not consume that glory, but we'll let it flow through us and we'll point it right back up to God. It's good to recognize people and it's right to give honor and all of that, but really all of it is coming through us as leaders and through you as a leader to be able to give it right back up to God and say it's all about Him. It, had it not been for God, you heard the testimonies, Had it not been for God, uh, where would I be right now? Now, without question, 
Each member in the church is expected to be a good example in order that unbelievers may observe us and be attracted to Jesus Christ. And according to our scripture text, each person in the body of Christ has a particular gift that differs from all the other gifts in the body. But notice what it says in verse 8 of our scripture text. The apostle Paul notes that there is something called the gift of being a leader. The gift of being a leader. So let's talk about a gifted leader. Everybody say a gifted leader. Please don't misunderstand what I mean by saying a gifted leader. I'm not referring to a talented leader, but rather a leader that has been given to the church as a gift from God. You got to get that. That's really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about my talent or my charisma, but I'm talking about what God gave to the church uh, and he's given it as a gift. Everybody say a gift. A gifted leader. You need a gifted leader in your life. You need someone that God has given. I heard it said up here, and they're prophetic when they said it because God has given us a gift here in leadership uh, that it may benefit the whole body of Christ. Everyone say amen. amen. According to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 14, New Living Translation, Paul says, uh, now these are the gifts. Everyone say the gifts. These are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This, notice, it doesn't fade away because there's people that you're going to come in contact with on the internet and in your journeys. They're going to say the church isn't relevant. The gathering under a pastor or a leader and listening to the fivefold ministries is not what you need in your life. You just need to get out there like a nomad uh, and do whatever you want to do and let God do what he wants to do through you. Uh, the church is not a nomadic church. Uh, the church is an ecclesia that is called out from this world uh, into a place of gathering uh, and it is the body of Jesus Christ uh, and we need the community of one another in the body. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do, work, do, do his work and build the church, the body of Christ. Uh, verse 13, uh, this will continue until we all could come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of uh, God's Son uh, that we will be mature in the Lord. Uh, we want to mature you, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Uh, then we will no longer be immature like children. Uh, we won't be tossed and blown about every wind of new teaching or doctrine. Uh, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies uh, so cleverly that they sound like the truth. I'm talking about a gifted leader. A gift that was given, selected, handpicked, even from the womb, and given to the church. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29, in the first part, and verse 30, in the latter part, uh, New Living Translation, are all prof apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? Are all we? Are we all teachers? In verse 30 says, of course not. Always remember and keep in mind that every believer does not have the gift of leadership. But every believer has to have a gifted leader. Every one of us is leading somehow, but not everyone in here has the particular gift of leadership. But everyone in here who's leading in different areas of your life needs a gifted leader in your life, a leader or pastor given by God himself. According to Acts chapter 14, verse 21 through 23, I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture here today because I'm trying to drive home a point. Every New Testament church had a gifted leader. Notice in the uh, New Living Translation, after preaching the good news there and making many disciples, they returned again to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, 
where they help believers to grow in love for God and each other. They encourage them to continue in faith in spite of the persecution, reminding them that they must enter into the kingdom of God through many tribulations. Paul and Barnabas also appointed, notice what they did on on their journeys, they appointed elders or leaders in every church, not just one or two, but in every established church, uh, they appointed elders or leaders or pastors uh, or overseers and and prayed for them uh, with fasting, turning them over to the care of the Lord in whom they trusted. Uh, Also notice what 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 through 7 says, uh, New Living Translation, Paul outlined the 15 qualifications uh, of a gifted leader. The 15 qualifications of a gifted leader. If someone aspires to be a a church leader, he desires an honorable position. Uh, So in verse 2, so a church leader must be a man uh, whose life is above reproach. Uh, He must be faithful to his wife. Uh, He must exercise uh, self-control, not slapping everyone in the church and cussing everybody out. Uh, He must exercise self-control, live wisely within their means, uh, and have a good reputation. Uh, He must enjoy having guests in his home. He has to be hospitable and he must be able to teach. In other words, they teach, but other people are learning. That's how you know if people are really teaching is that people are learning. Can you say amen? Amen. He must be able to teach. He must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. He must be gentle, not quarrelsome, quarrelsome, and not, lo- not, not love money. He must manage his own family well and have his children who respect and obey him. For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? A church leader, he goes on to say, must not be a new believer because he, mu- he might become proud and the devil would cause him to fall. Also, people outside the church, the community of the church, must speak well of him so that he will not be disgraced and fall into the devil's trap. A gift, everybody say a gifted leader. It's not a small matter. Although we all can lead in different areas, you should be leading your family and you should be a bishop of your home, uh, but never minimize uh, the gift that God has given to the church. Uh, it's not so you can fall at their feet uh, and say, oh, pastor this and pastor first lady this and all. What it's really saying is uh, I'm going to listen uh, as God uses you uh, because I'm going to take care of this gift uh, that's been given to me, not because of my merit uh, and not because uh, I deserved it. Uh, God gave you this gift uh, because he loves you uh, and he wants you to bring you home uh, And he wants you to be cared for and taken care of. So you need to manage the gift that God gave you very well. And recognize it. A gifted leader's responsibility is to lead, feed, and protect the flock of God. Take you somewhere. Feed you the word of God. And ward off everything that tries to to disrupt, disrupt the church. There are times when I'll talk to different ones because there's stuff going on that would try and disrupt. And if I see it as a shepherd, under shepherd, as a leader, as the overseer, as the pastor, as the one who's supposed to take uh, an oversight, I'll say certain things because of the love of God that God gave me as a gift. And this gift, sometimes uh, it just seems like a robot. Sometimes it just goes through the motion. Sometimes it can get mundane and the voice sounds very, very, very just uh, uh, monotone and the the voice really isn't hitting you. uh, But you let a wolf start raising his head up uh, and you'll see the shepherd start coming uh, out of his bag uh, and start changing uh, and taking off this garment uh, and putting on the warrior outfit uh, and going to prayer and begin to say some things. Uh, Why? Because uh, the enemy wants to steal kill and destroy but the Lord has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly but you've got to hear me today a gifted leader it's a lead feed and protect the flock in Acts chapter 20 in the beginning of the church verse 28 through 31 New Living Translation the Apostle Paul told the gifted leaders guard yourselves and God's people feed and shepherd God's flock his church purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave Paul said 
not sparing the flock. They don't care where you end up. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out, he says with exclamation point. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you, night and day and my many tears for you. I'm speaking on behalf of my wife and I as a gift to this church. We travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. I cannot tell you the amount of tears that we've shed individually and sometimes collectively for this church outside of our normal prayer meetings. Why? It's a responsibility. And, and the Lord says, you've got to watch over them. You've got to care for them. Paul was talking about, I, I'm travailing because I want the Lord to rise up in you. And God's got a great work for you. Uh, but you need to know that we're behind the scenes praying for you. Uh, this gift that God gave us is not just a gift that you put on a shelf. It's a gift that's an action gift. It's a gift that's going to do something. It's a gift that God's going to use. When you need to use us like we need to be used uh, to begin to believe in it and trust it uh, and follow it uh, and learn that God is trying to raise you up. And remember, as one person said already today, follow us as we follow Christ. First Peter, Peter also wrote in First Peter 5 and verse 1 through 5, amplified, I strongly urge the leaders among you, pastors, spiritual leaders of the church, as a fellow elder. He goes on to say in verse 2, shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, not because you have to, but voluntarily, according to the will of God and not motivated for shame gain, shameful gain, but the wholehearted enthusiasm, not lording over it though assi uh, those assigned to your care. Do not be arrogant or overbearing, but be examples of Christian living to the flock's Set a pattern of integrity for your congregation. And when the chief shepherd Christ appears, you will receive a conqueror's unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience, be subject to the elders. Seek their counsel. God has blessed us to not only be the gift to the church, but send other gifted leaders in here to be able to help shepherd this flock. And I'm telling you something, whenever things come up in your life, you need to understand that and bring it and say, Lord, uh, I'm getting ready to make some major decisions in my life. Uh, you need to go to the ones that are going to be able to help direct you uh, and give you good, sound advice. Uh, the Bible talks about their safety in a multitude uh, of counselors. Uh, and that's not sheep to sheep, that's sheep to shepherd. Ah! Come on now. You need to understand that because sheep will get together and they talk sheep talk. I feel you, man. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Pastor said that, but, you know, I'm um, not. Nah, yeah. When sheep get together, they'll talk. And that's going to always be. But there's also got to be this understanding. There's sheep to shepherd talk. And then when the shepherd begins to give direction, he's going to do it based upon the, the chief shepherd who says, no. Here's what the word says. Here's what Paul said. Here's what Peter said. Here's what Amos said. Here's what Moses did. Here's what Jeremiah did. Here's the situation that the apostles found themselves in. And, and we'll begin to give you good direction and give you good counsel. And it may rub you wrong, but sometimes the sheep need to be able to get a little broading. Sometimes you got to take that crook, uh, that, that hook that's in the, in the uh, shepherd's hands, uh, and you got to nestle them around the neck and pull them back in the fold. Uh, and you got to say, no, 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 you're going a little bit too far. You need to just bring it back on in. And sometimes that rod's got to be used against the wolf. Never forget that a gifted leader is meant to be a blessing to your spiritual life, not a curse. You notice, those of you who have been with me 21 years, they'll tell you, I'm not a dictator. I don't have binoculars. I'm not watching everything you do. I do have ears, and I do have eyes, and I do watch. But there's, there's this... I believe in the Holy Ghost. And so we lead as we would want to be led. I lead as I would want my children to be led by a pastor. And my wife does the same. 
because we want to be good examples of Pastor Wilkes so that he'll go out and Sister Wilkes and they'll start a church and, and that what you see here you would see in them and, and Pastor Maldonado is a uh, pastor in the Spanish speaking and then he'll, you'll see in him the, in me in, the, in him the same things you see in me we won't be exactly alike but you know the same style and as they're around long enough and, and as we send you out some of you will uh, eventually go out and pastor churches uh, but don't just get this thing about you know what I'm gifted and I can do it yeah you may be gifted but you want to be a gifted leader a gift to the church. You want to be a gift to their spiritual environment. You don't want to be one that lords over and just says, I just need people to follow me. If that's why you're doing it and wanting that type of accolade so people will follow you, well, go out there and get on the track team or something. Yeah. The writer of Hebrews 13, verse 7, New Living Translation stated, uh, remember your leaders who taught you in the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. The same writer goes on to say in Hebrews 13 and 17, amplified, obey. That's a nasty word in our generation, uh, in our time right now. But here's what the Lord says. He, he says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority, in, uh, authority over you. For they are noticed keeping watch over your soul. Your soul is more important than your job. Your soul is more important than your family. Your soul is more important than what your aspirations and your dreams are. Your soul is more important. And there's nobody else in this world that has your soul in, been mandated to watch over your soul other than a gifted leader. That's a high calling. And then don't, don't desire to be a person that watches over a soul because now... You are responsible. I am responsible, right, Pastor Pinnell? For your soul. And I, my wife and I know we take it very seriously. I know I'm going to have to answer to God. The way I treated you, what I said to you, the way I watched over you, and, and I'm going to have to answer. You're going to have to answer for your stuff, but I'm going to have to answer for my stuff, and then I'm going to answer for your stuff. Not what you did, but how I led as a gift to the church. He says, obey them, for they watch for your souls and continually guarding your spiritual warfare, welfare as those who will give an account of their stewardship of you. Let them do this with joy and not with grief and groans. For this would be of no benefit to you. So when you murmur and complain and groan and talk about what I just preached or this or that and get together with other sheep and start saying all kinds of stuff, it won't be good for you. It'd be better to just say, hey, if you need to talk, talk, talk to one of the leaders, talk to myself, talk, bring it out, let's get it together, but not this other stuff and not just going and say, oh, I'll just find me a new leader. No, what you need is a gifted leader, a leader that has been given to you by God that will reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, will love you and will protect you and feed you the word of God. A gifted leader is mandated to gather the, the people for church services in order to instruct equip, empower, and encourage God's people. It's not just to protect you, feed you, but it's to equip you. It is to empower you. It is to encourage you. When you come in these doors, you should leave. When you leave here, you might come in heavy, but when you leave here, you should feel lighter when you leave this place. There should be an altar. I, 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 I shudder at churches that don't have an altar. An altar where people can come, and, and you may need to come to this altar many times, uh, but God met me at an altar. And if, if you don't have an altar in your life, a place of sacrifice, uh, a place of dying, uh, a place of repentance, uh, a place of coming to grips with you and God and saying, Lord, uh, forgive me, Lord. Uh, Lord, that's me he's talking about. Lord, I need a change in my life. Uh, we offer that here so you can leave encouraged, uh, empowered, uh, equipped, uh, that the word of God will build you up. Uh, so when you leave this place, uh, you can take Take on hell with a squirt gun. You can take on the forces of, of this world with less because of God that has met you and helped you and encouraged you. 
Luke records in Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47, New Living's translation, and I'm winding up here. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the early church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves, notice, to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Not only to fellowship and getting together for fellowship, but also for gathering for church. Notice, and sharing in meals. Because there'd be people to tell you, you don't need the organized church. You don't have to have an organized church. They didn't do that in the New Testament. Yes, they did. Every single day. So now let's go. I, oh, tomorrow, church is at 7. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, church is at 7 o'clock. And we're all coming to church. Now, you say, man, that's, that's New Testament. Pastor Zeno, who, who was one of our pastors here, one of our elders, and was with me for many years, and one of our pastors here, he passed away. But when he grew up, his dad was a pastor. When he grew up, he said, I never had a day off. And this is one of the issues he had with his father. And they had got, became estranged. And then later, while he was here, he was able to reconnect with his dad. But here's what he said. And here's what he said to his dad. Dad. And his siblings said the same thing. We never got, the only time we ever got a time off is when we left town one time and you were on, in revival. Monday through Sunday, they had church all his life. Created issues, but all his life. The New Testament church here, even when they first came together, they met every single day for teaching and for fellowship and to share in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. Verse 43 says, a, a deep sense of awe came over all and the apostles performed mir many mi mir miraculous signs uh, and wonders uh, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Uh, they sold their property and possessions uh, and shared the money with those in need. Uh, they worshiped together in the temple each day. Met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals uh, with great joy and generosity. Uh, my point to this is uh, there is, uh, uh, we set aside uh, one day of the week, the first day of the week, uh, every Sunday here and other places may be something else. Uh, but we come together and it's not coming to get together to control you. Uh, it's coming together to equip you, to empower you, to encourage you uh, so you can go into the world uh, and you can impact this world. Uh, it's to get community together that some brothers. Brothers and sisters of like same faith can get together and say, I went through this this week. Maybe you need to talk to one of the leaders about this. Or maybe you need to be prayed for right now. And you begin to lay hands on one another. Not so you can have this community of people be complaining and going through stuff. So that you can encourage one another to go another mile. And then you would say, you're not the only one going through that. I went through that a year ago. And look what God has done. Talking about a gifted leader. Finally, the writer of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, expanded Bible says, you should not, everybody say should not. You should not stay away from neglect, forsake the church meetings as some are doing. Even in Paul's day, 2,000 years ago, they had these little branch groups going around saying God's with me and God does have miracles and signs and wonders. But... We had to connect. I just heard a, a, a guy teaching. What's that guy, comedian's name? Ken Davis. Just listened to him yesterday. Here's what Ken Davis said. Powerful man of God. Powerful ministry. Worldwide ministry. Most of you, maybe, a lot of you maybe heard him, but he's a very Christian comedy guy. And he said, I went to the darkest time, one of the darkest times of my life. And I was going through because some persecution was coming against me. And he looked at his wife and he said, if I die, he said, I know you're going to be okay. But me, I don't think, and he's in a large church, but he said, I don't think I'll have five people at my funeral because I was always ministering. I was always doing this. He said, I could just see my wife walking down the steps of the church, just her, clunk, 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 grabbing his casket just down the steps by, her, by herself. And he said, God smote him and let him go through that dark time to let him know you need a church. You say you go there, but you're never there. 
You need a body of people that know what's going on in your life and they can speak into your life. And he said, I, I decided from that time on, although I'm full time on the road, he said, I'm home. I go home and it costs me money, but I go home at least two times out of the month to be sitting on a pew and listening to my pastor and listening to the people of God and being in the presence of God where I can, I'm telling you what, somebody that's out there doing that uh, is recognizing uh, while other people are trying to drag you out there and doing your own thing, you need to come under here under sound leadership and begin to let God develop you so you can infect, affect this world the way he wants you to affect this world. He wants to raise up some missionaries. Uh, he wants to raise up some evangelists. He wants to raise up some pastors. Uh, he wants to raise up some teachers. Uh, he wants to raise up all kinds of ministry gifts in this place. Uh, but you've got to be around uh, the people of God and gifted leadership that you can be equipped to do the work that God has called you to do. He said, and I end with this. Don't stay away from the church, as some are doing, but you should encourage each other to stay faithful to Christ and to other believers. And even more, as you see the day coming, the day of the Lord, when Christ will return. He's talking about the second coming here, but he said, even as we see that day approaching, the coming of the Lord, we should be saying to Jesse, Jesse, don't, don't let anything stop you from serving God. Say to Brother Hangin, Brother Hangin, don't worry about anything. I know you're discouraged right now, but you need to stay connected. That Pastor Gail was saying just, just a couple of uh, uh, days ago, and, and, and he said it today, that the church, love the church. Love each other. Encourage each other, build each other up, and recognize gifted leadership. Called leadership. Called. This, for me, is not a selection. This is not a choice. This is a calling. I don't know, and I can't speak for everyone who pastors a church. All I can take account for is me and my wife, and we were called. I had a direct and specific call to do what I do. It isn't easy. It isn't uh, glamorous. You know, dealing with sheep, shearing sheep, herding sheep, watching over sheep. David rather took on Goliath. <laughs> he was glad to get out of the sheep <laughs> business. <laughs> I want to kill giants. You know, I want to rip lion's mouths open. Right? I want to take a bear and get him in a bear hug and squeeze it to death. But sheep? It's a whole different story because sheep wander. Sheep get lost. You're like, what in the world? <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> sheep follow. You know, they follow the other sheep. It's like. <laughs> and sheep get injured. And what injures you injures us. Part of the gift. It's part of the, being a gifted leader. It hurts. I can't tell you the amount of tears I've cried out to God, and I don't do it a lot in here, but just really, why? Gut-wrenching over people. Cheap. And here's what, I, here's what I do now. You know, even I look out on the street. And I know I can't change everybody, and I can't change every situation on the street, but I look on the street. If it's a gangster, you know, I have a a real uh, thing about gangs and stuff because of stuff that I went through um, and had to deal with. But here's what the Lord said. To help me to have compassion and not anger or acting out, I should say. Is, I say they got to be pastor too. That's what I say. To myself, out loud. They got to be pastor too. Somebody walks in front of my car and they, they, they would do whatever. I said, they, they got to be pastor too. Look at this guy. He had his 
had his mountain of stuff. He's by my house, has his mountain of stuff of, on his um, basket. I see him all the time. And I say, he's got to be pastor too. But I, I, I also noticed that if I invited that guy to come to this church because of where his proximity is, he'll never be able to come. And even if you or I or our church buses picked him up and brought him here, he wouldn't be able to come because who's going to take care of that mountain of stuff? It's going to be God when he gets back. That's his house. That's like you're saying to me, leave your house, come to church, and thieves are waiting right outside my house for me to leave, and I'm scared to leave. So the Lord spoke to me, and he said, well, take church to him. So I've already made up my mind. I'm going to introduce him and get to know who he is. And, said, and finally, just set up my little chart and set up my little chair and the little table. He's going to say, what are you doing? We're having church, man. Every week. Every week, I'll have church with you. Because I am the church. You are the church. And this is where the, 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 the gifted leader, not the talented leader, but the gifted leader that God has given to this church is telling you to have the same spirit. Look out among you. Look around you. Let God use you. Let God equip you. Don't be in such a rush to run out and do this or do that. I want to see our young people spring up and take over. But I'll, I believe that we have stuff here that can help equip you train you and then mobilize you correctly so that you will not when you face your greatest fears which will be yourself when you face your greatest fears out there you will not crumble you will stand can we all stand so today on this 21 year anniversary 21 years, we're at that place of maturity. The Lord spoke, and I've said it to this church before, 30 years I've been serving the Lord. And he said, you just are beginning. I would ask you today, if you're willing to receive the gift of leadership, not you getting leadership, you're already leaders, but you're willing to receive the gift that God gave you of leadership here. With housed in a human being. Not a gifted human being, because I have a lot to learn there too. But I'm the best you got. <laughs> to admit, you know. And you're willing to follow that leadership. I'd like for you to just step forward. We're going to pray over you.